OMG. Wow. I feel great seeing everybody here. Thank you for coming out for my talk tonight. Okay, so how do I move the slides? Do I, I have to move the slides, right? Oh, cool. Okay, perfect. So, who am I? All right, so going back to 2010, I was a 26 year old, uh, apparently white male, born and raised in Philadelphia, all right, walking distance from this bar, actually. All right, I went to Central High School, and then I went to Rosinus College, and then UPenn. I was a psych and neuro dual major, and East Asia Studies and Politics minors, okay? Um, after college, I went to South Korea, and I was a middle school teacher, so you can see two of my classes there. Um, I had kind of a cool thing I was doing with my friend, where I went to a new country every New Year's Eve, and I celebrated New Year's Eve in a new country every year. And that one is in London. Let's see, I was a half marathon runner. As you can see here, I was in costume one as an escape convict. Makes sense, right? They're on the run. And uh, I was a fencer, as I mentioned. And also Sherlock Holmes for Halloween, and everything like that. But anyway, I was planning on a career in, psycholo in psychiatry. So I have tier two publications that I was involved in with my late mentor, Dr. Elizabeth Weller. Okay. So everything was going the way I wanted it to go as of November 21st, 2010. Life made sense, everything was smooth. But on November 22nd, 2010, everything changed for me. I was on a run and I was hit by a car on November 22nd, 2010. I was in ICU for about a week and a half and we did not know if I was going to make it initially. We did not know what was going to happen. I did not wake up for some time. It was a pretty drastic situation, as you can imagine. Um, that is the intersection where it occurred. You might actually recognize that intersection. It's not too far from here. And there I am about a week after that accident. So here I'm describing the Glasgow Coma Scale to give you a sense of what my level of functioning was. This is a video. And here you can say that my eye response is about a three, which means that I'm opening my eyes in response to my mom's voice, but not beyond that. And that was taken about three days after my accident. Can I uh, play this? How do I play it? Double click on it, maybe? Yeah. So my mom right now is speaking to me, and we see that I might try to open my, there we go. We see that I'm moving my eyes, but I'm not able to do anything beyond that currently. My mom touches me there, and we see I have a reaction to that too. Um, but aside from that, that was my level of functioning roughly three days after being hit by that car. Um, okay. So why am I here today, functioning as well as I am? considering that I almost died. Well, they told me that age and fitness made a huge difference. That I was in shape from being a half marathon runner and that I was in my 20s. They said if either one was different, I might have passed on, I might have died. But these two taken together really made a huge difference in my life and my recovery. So what exactly happened after the accident? Well. Some of you might know about propofol, the Michael Jackson drug. So I was put on propofol, actually. And that way I would have time to recover, heal. And also, when I was waking up, I was pulling out my tubes, which I would imagine is reasonable. If you woke up with tubes in you, you probably want to pull them out too, right? So I would do that, so they kept me unconscious. I was in Temple Hospital for two weeks, then Moss Rehab inpatient in Elkins Park for about two weeks. And then I was outpatient ever since. And I'm actually still going once a week to Moss Rehab on Tabor Road. So I learned very quickly, okay, not to tell people that I was in rehab, okay? <laughs> very quickly, I tried telling people that I was in rehab and I had someone say to me, I don't know you do drugs. You know, so I had to learn to tell 
people that no, no. Drugs? No. Accident rehab. Okay? Accident rehab. All right. Good. Got that clear. So, what are head injuries exactly? There are many terms to consider about head injuries. One is that uh, injuries may be open or closed. So if someone has a penetrating injury, that's technically an open injury, okay? And a closed injury, like my own, well, it's just like that. There was no penetration, I was hit by a car, and that was it. So we also have a concussion as a term, and a conclu uh, contusion. Okay, that was slide well. So concussion is the most common form of head injury. It's a very minor injury. It's due to a sudden change in momentum or movement, pretty much. And a contusion is any form of bruising on the brain as a result of skull fracture, okay? So what are some other terms to consider regarding head injuries? Well, there's coup contra coup, okay? And coup contra coup is a form of contusion where someone gets hit. So for example, the front of the brain hits the front of the skull and then they rock back and the back of the brain hits the back. So that's why it's coup contra coup. It's hitting both sides of the brain. Uh, also, you may have heard about shaken baby syndrome. This is just when a baby is shaken forcibly. We have to realize that a baby has a relatively large head compared to the rest of its body, right? Has a lack of neck support and is still developing. So it's a lot of increased risk as a result of all of that, okay? So here's a video of coup contra coup, which just really, you know, shows you pretty simply what it is that I'm describing. Yeah. So here you'll see, right, that we have a picture of the brain here, the white matter, right, gray matter, obviously. So the force is hitting at that side, we have that coup, and then with the whiplash, we have the contra coup on that side, okay? And we're zooming in here on the junction between the white and gray matter, and this is where we see that the signal of the neuron and the axon is compromised as a result of this hit. So normally, we have it as such. Right. And then with the impact, we see it stretches and an axon may shear or break. Okay? This very well may have happened in terms of my injury. Okay? So... What are some other terminology, statistics about head injury? Well, hematoma would be a collection of blood outside of the blood vessels, okay? So if blood was where it didn't necessarily belong, basically. Okay? Uh, anoxia would be a total decrease in the level of oxygen for the brain cells, okay? And second impact syndrome, which surprises me, frankly, is that someone will have a second concussion after having their first. This is, this is important in terms of student athletes, right, in a sense, because they may be hit multiple times. So that's something to consider in terms of athletics for college students, for example. Okay? Uh, so what about TBI? Um, what are some of the statistics? What are some of the information that we should know about TBI? Well, actually, a high number of people sustain TBI per year. If the U.S. is about 300 million, we're looking at 1.7 million people sustaining a TBI. Because this is all in the U.S. You can see the article I referenced, traumatic brain injury in the U.S. So that's less than 1%, but every year, that's pretty substantial. And we see here that it's roughly about a third of all deaths related to injury here in the U.S. Uh, about one-fifth of emergency room visits for children that are very young, and about one-fifth for emergency room visits for adults, obviously, 75 and older. And understandably, males tend to be diagnosed with TBI more often. I say understandably because maybe males are engaging in activities that make sense that would lead to TBI potentially. Stereotypically, anyway. So what are some of the causes of traumatic